Welcome to Concordia Theological Seminary and to our lectionary podcast. We are now at Proper 10, which is Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. And this is the story, the beloved story of the Good Samaritan. It's a classic Luke story again, which shows the heart and compassion of our Lord. Um, and it also highlights, I think, the great storytelling ability of both Jesus as a preacher and I suppose Luke also as an author. It's classic Luke. Now, the story that we have is um, there is a nomikos, there is a, uh, here we go, teacher of the law. So nomikos, he's a teacher of the law, and what's he doing? Um, he rises up and he ekperatzon. He's going to try or to test Jesus. This is also classic Luke in pattern in which people come up to Jesus to test him, and really, oftentimes, it's to make him stumble. Usually, when you want to make somebody stumble, you begin with a kind of a, a title or a great honor, like, oh, I know you're so smart, I'd like to ask you this question. So he says, teacher, and that might be a little bit of a test for Jesus. Will he tr be a true teacher of Israel? Um, kind of a, a simple question, I suppose, in a way. What must I do, eternal life, or, uh, to, what must I do to inherit um, eternal life? And um, so Jesus answers, and I think this is a good kind of, uh, sometimes this is um, a good tactic when people are trying to box you or to put you into a corner is not to answer the question directly, but to come back with a question. And I think we as pastors, as Christians, can do this. When we know that people have us on the spot, let's ask a question in return. So, he says to him in the law, um, wh wh what, what is written? What is gegraptai? Or how do you, how do you read it? And uh, so the answer then comes back. Uh, you shall, we know this, you shall agapse say, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with your, um, all of your soul and with all of your strength and with all of your mind. So everything that we have, um, we should do for the sake of uh, our neighbor for the sake of God, you shall love your love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And then the second table of the of the law is then uh, your neighbor also as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. And um, now Jesus is acting as a teacher here, and Jesus says to him. Again, I think we've seen this before. Um, he says, orthos. He says, you have answered this correctly. And verse 28, he simply says, um, uh, do this. That is, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and all with your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor. Do this and you will live. Now, evidently, the man, this is a classic, this is a very Lutheran text, I suppose, because this gets at the nature of who we are as human beings. What is it that we do when we look at the law? Well, we try to justify ourselves. We like to think that we are good people. We want to look at the law and say, yes, I've obeyed the law fully. So wishing to dekai osai himself. He said to Jesus, well then, you know, I've presumably I've loved the Lord God in all of my heart, soul, mind, everything. Well then, who is my, that's the classic question, who is my neighbor? And uh, maybe it makes us think of Cain and Abel. Where's your brother? And am I my brother's keeper? Uh, for, for Cain, I suppose, 
not even Abel, his brother, was his neighbor. Well, who then is my neighbor? And to that, Jesus goes and, as he often does, especially in the Gospel of Luke, he tells a story. And he says, there is a certain man who went down from Jerusalem into Jericho, verse 30, and he fell among robbers. Maybe we're already thinking about our Lord when he is crucified between the two thieves or the two, the two robbers. So there's a man who walks down the road and he, he falls among robbers and we, we know what happens to him. That uh, they, they stripped him, which will also happen to Jesus, by the way, and, and blows, plagos, they, they place blows uh, upon him and um, then, they, then they went away. And um, what's, what's remarkable is uh, having gone away, they, this is a great word, hemithane, they left him um, half dead. So he's all but dead there on the side of the road unless somebody will come and save him. And now you think he would be lucky, I suppose, because it'd be good to have somebody come by if you're lying on the side of the road. What the best person, I suppose, that you would think would be a priest, a man of God. Surely a man of God would come and help him. But that's not what happens. It just so happened that it, he ereos, a priest, came down. Um, and it, the story is, cries out for embellishment because I mean, it's remarkable to think about what the priest might have looked like. He was evidently a priest, what he was wearing. I suppose I could think about myself in a collar as I stand here. But seeing him, he just, ante per, per elethan, he walked along on the other side of the road. So likewise, a Levite, there's another person who works in the temple. You think if the man could see, maybe his eyes were somewhat shut because he'd been beaten. But if you could see a, a Levite coming, that would be good news. Somebody who worked in the house of God and you think would be a person of mercy by his very profession. But he came according to the same way there according, and coming and and. Seeing him, so he did see him. It's not like, oh, he didn't notice. Saw him by the side of the road. And he ante perlathan. He just walked along side. Um, and it's difficult in these days. You know, I think in the old days, you know, when you saw a car by the side of the road, um, you'd go and help. That was the thing to do. Um, now there's, I suppose, there's a lot of fear. Uh, in the day of cell phone, I suppose you can call 911 and get some help. But uh, these guys did absolutely, absolutely nothing for the man who was beaten and left half dead. Now, at that comes after that comes a Samaritan. So, a Samaritan is he's not just. I don't know whether Luke is trying to say something here, but he is. Hoduon, he is journeying. It's almost, maybe he's on a pilgrimage, or it, even though it's the same road, maybe we can see that he's in fact on a different path. And he came and seeing him, now this is the word that we see applies to Jesus all the time. He had, he had mercy on him. He had compassion on him. He was moved with pity upon the man's plight. And so he, he takes a completely different tact than the religious men did. But he went and um, the blows, he bound up the blows, he dressed the, he dressed the wounds. And then he 
placed upon those wounds oil and wine. Um, it'd be like putting on a you know, gauze pad with anti to wash it out and to uh, apply an oil or an ointment on it so that, and we know that with wounds, that the, that's the most important thing. They've got to be cleaned out and then they've got to be sealed with oil so that they're not infected, so that they have time to, to heal. And that's got to be done. I mean, think about, that's what killed all the people, for instance, in the Civil War. It was their wounds, but then it was their infections. And uh, this, this was known in the ancient world as well. So they used this medicinally. They took the, the oil and, they, and he took the, the wine and he, he, was dressing his, he was dressing his wounds. Then what he did is, he, it's really great because he placed him upon his own katanos. He placed him upon his own animal, a beast of burden, and he uh, then he proceeded to take him to to an inn, and there he also he continued to to care for him, to, to take care of him. And now the next day he had to go. Um, he had to set off again on his journey, but he didn't leave the man without help. In fact, he, you can see, he took out uh, two, and he gave two denarii, two days wages, to the innkeeper, and he says, now, take care of him. So this is also, I think, in the Gospel of Luke, it's important because in the Gospel of Luke, you can see the personal care that we give to those in distress, but also there's a monetary aspect. He is willing to give his time. He is hands-on in the anointing of the wound, but he's also willing to use his money in a way for the sake of the kingdom, for the sake of the poor, for the sake of the needy, uh, for the sake of Christ, for the sake of Christians. This Samaritan truly shows himself to be good. And he says, whatever you... Uh, pay out, I will then give to you uh, when I return. It's, so he says, take care of him. If there's anything else that you need, whatever more he says that you spend, well, I will apo dosai, I will, uh, I will give it back in my, when I, upon erkestai. So whatever, whatever you pay out, in order to care for him, when I return, when I come back, I will give it to you. It's a compelling story, and it's a story that I think in our sermons that we can kind of play out as we think about, you know, what it means to show mercy and what it means to be, I guess, religious, especially as we are pastors. What does that mean? Um, now the question then becomes, Jesus loves to ask questions, which one of these uh, turned out to be, he asked this question, um, which, which one of these proved to be the neighbor, or which one seemed to you uh, to be the neighbor to the one who fell among the robbers. So which of the three was a placeon? Which one does it seem to you was a placeon or was a neighbor to the one who fell among the robbers? And the answer is the one who did or the one who did or had mercy with him or upon him. And again, Jesus being the good teacher, he's a fair Greater, he says, well, you've spoken rightly, but here he says, go, and you do likewise. And that's our story. Um, well, it, how, it, I guess the, the classic question for this, as we all know, is, is this law or is this gospel? And the answer, of course, is both. Um, 
Inasmuch as we're a sinner, we see that we have not loved the Lord God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, and there is no road or path to salvation in that way. On the other hand, uh, what Christ has done for us, he saw us as we were upon the side of the road, and he has had compassion upon us. And this is a beautiful picture of the church, that he nurses our wounds. He applies oil. We think of the sealing, perhaps, of our baptism. And he applies wine, which is medicinal. It's cleansing. We might think of that, the wine that we drink from the chalice that cleanses us from all sins. Besides the wine that brings joy, here wine is a kind of a medicine of salvation. Um, and he brings us to the end where we are then allowed to heal. And again, it comes, it comes at a price because he's going to promise the, the innkeeper that he's going to apodese, he's going he's to pay back everything that was owed. So salvation comes at a price and Christ is willing to pay it. And it's, it comes, it's not simply a one-term thing. It's going to take time. It's going to be, he's going to have to go out of his way. And that's what our Lord did. He went out of his way for us. And then, of course, it's not longer simply law, but it's also an inspiration for us because this is what we're called to do also. We're called to be a neighbor to others. And that means not simply not to harm them. When we think of the Ten Commandments, it's not enough to say, I haven't killed, but... We're called then to be neighbors, to help our neighbor in every bodily need, even as Christ has helped us and shown compassion for us. And that is a good reason on this day to give thanks. And thank you for, again, being a part of our community here at Concordia Theological Seminary.